Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias here, and uh, we were really still really impressed with the update to Claude the Sonnet version. If you haven't seen our other video on it, just saying, yeah, hey, it now is offering up not only V2 code, but also V1 code. And I was telling Isaias the other day, I'm like, why I'm so excited is it levels me, not that I'm as good, I'm going to be as good as Isaias, but it levels me up, me up far more than him because he's an expert in auto hotkey, right? I'm kind of intermediary. I'm very knowledgeable, but I don't know the the... I'm very good in the overall what it can do it and, and how it can do it, the things it can do, but not the exact coding of it right on some things. So for me, I'm just ecstatic because we're seeing it dump out really cool stuff. So we're going to cover some of the cool things we've learned also in the last couple of days playing with it um, and things to look for and, and this and that. So in case you want to jump into using it. Yeah. yeah. And it is funny to me that we we are more excited about, oh, it offering V2 code. And then we realized, does it do V1? And we didn't know. <laughs> we didn't even test it until right now. Like, okay, let me see. And then, which we'll we'll jump to in a bit later too, we, we had it convert V1 to V2. And V1 it did, to V2, yes. Did a really good job. We, we had to tweak it a little, right? But yeah. 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 So uh, this is the uh, homepage. It has some news and stuff in there, but I just dismissed that. That's what it would look like if you had been using it for a few, you know, a few times. And you would see here kind of like a history from the previous chats you had. I, at, the, at the beginning, I was like kind of lost because on ChatGPT, um, you get the history always on the left side in here. But in um, in Claude, the history is not always on a sidebar. You have to go to the main page. I will show you. You just go to the, the main website, Claude AI, if you're logged in. And it will greet you with your history right here. So it would tell you how many times you've used it and so on. Now, this is the one that we were playing with today, right? And uh, there's a few things that we noticed that are very cool about it. Now, I don't know if you've seen, uh, if you can see here on the right, I have this, what is called a chat controls and so on. This would not show up like that if you don't have a very specific um, option turned on. Um, if you go to your logging image in here and you go to the feature preview, you will have to turn on what is called artifacts. Bad name, actually. <laughs> Usually, because when we think about artifacts, we think about something that is not supposed to be there. This is something else. For um, Claude, if you turn this on, whenever it generates code, it shows it on a different sort of window, which is great. I actually like this yeah. more than ChatGPT because in ChatGPT, if it provides certain um, code, you would have to scroll up and down to find it, right? So I, I told it, hey, do this one thing um, uh, and then go ahead and show me the code. And then if you need a previous version or something, you will have to scroll up and down to copy or paste, right? In Claude, it is not like that. When you have artifacts, then there's a dedicated window that you can actually look at the code. Um, and let me show you what that looks like. So I gave it a small prompt to create a GUI in V1 and uh, to do something specific about it. And when it finishes, it shows up with this box right here. This is, again, great because even if I scroll the chat and I'm reading the chat, the code doesn't move and I can keep that on my view. Not only that, I told it to make some changes to it. I told it, hey, change the location of the controls to make, make them relative with relative positioning. And it created a second version of the same script. And then I realized, oh, look, down here you can keep track. You can see the different versions of the same script, which is extremely awesome. Because if I want to compare one or the other, or just look at it, or just copy one or decide from one another, I have a very quick way of jumping through one another. And you'll make the question like, hey, what if I ask it to make a totally different script? Like I said, okay, create a totally different script that does this and that. And it actually created a different file with a different title and it doesn't have the versions because this is a different thing. This is the first version of it. Then I realized that we have this little arrow in here. And when you click on that, you can see all the scripts that it had created and the individual ones that, that are different. And for each of them, it keeps track of the versions. For two versions for this one, one version for that one, one version for that one. Extremely cool. I actually like this. 
I definitely think that this, at least for coding, is a great interface because I can speak to it and don't don't have I don't have to scroll up to find the one that I cared about, right? It just gives me the code. I, I gave it some code. And this is the example in which I told it, hey, convert this V1 script to V2. I went ahead and um, told it that, and it created this new version of it. I'm going to tell you, this is 99% done. Like, I had to, for example, remove the, the, the icon file because I didn't have it. And those quotation marks, remove that from there. Then it started working right away. Like. Very cool. The, 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 the work that I had to do was minimal <laughs> compared to when I try it with ChatGPT because ChatGPT gives me code that looks correct, but it isn't. Like, I, I, I wasn't able to make it work. Um, so for me, it, it went down to just the, commenting these two lines, removing this quotation mark, and I think the other one was this W right here. Just put two commas in there. After I did that, the code worked. And, and actually, I still have it open in here. I just went ahead and there it is. It's just working. Like, that's the V2 version of it. This was a V1 script that we created a while back. It's looking good. I actually tested it to see if it would break or whatever. It didn't break. Like, it added the new one. I select the one. It's very interesting that everything works as intended. And it was just like five to 10 minutes for me to create the prompt, copy the code, paste it, and delete three things. That's it. That's what I had to do. This is going to so, save our clients a lot of money when they when they ask us to do stuff for them because sometimes they want us to convert a V1 to a V2. And I would bet you it'll take us less than a quarter of the time than what it would have before, right? Like it's going to be really, really good at that. Mainly because converting has a lot of repetitive things. Like, for example, if you have message box coma, that in V2 is not valid because of the coma. I will have to go through the whole code and modify that. And of course, I have find and replace, but then I don't have the minutia of, oh, this one I don't have to do that and this one I do. But if I give that to AI, it will just go ahead and do it automatically for me. And it's just the repetitiveness of it that I don't want to do. Everything else, like I will look at the code. And we also discussed yeah. earlier, um, if you are considering converting, we also highly, highly recommend you convert to V2 or, or sorry, use V2. Now we're recommending actually converting your stuff to V2 because it's it's so much easier. But if you're considering also refactoring and optimizing your code, first convert it from V1 to V2, get it running, and then ask it to optimize it and refactor it because um, there's so many things that are much easier to do in V2. And if you did that in V1, it might create some crazy stuff that you'd really, you know, it, it wouldn't work around. Right, and then also, I know you play with a little bit now. I'm still, and I, and and now I'll probably be switching. Now this is the first time where I'll admit I'm like you know um, I, I love Studio. We created a V2 version of HK Studio for working with AutoHotKey, but because no one's going to be creating a uh, Claude or ChatGPT AutoHotKey Studio extension anytime soon, <laughs> right? Like using VS Code, you have you know. So many, it's it's by far the world's most popular tool. And um, those people are creating extensions all the time. We tested one. It wasn't as good as the copilot that Isaiah uses in, in Visual Studio. But it's still, I guarantee you, and I also guarantee that at some point, ChatGPT is going to be um, doing V2 code reliably as well. And using those extensions inside your editor, your IDE, it's phenomenal, right? It's just really, really cool. Yeah, definitely. And um, what you have to realize is the good thing about popular editors is that there's so many people working on it that you always get the latest stuff really quickly, right? It's not that other editors might not get it, but it's more probable that if something is missing, when I, when, when I tested the extension, I was like, oh, it's missing this and that. And you right away said the truth, like, we don't have to wait long. Somebody's going to do it. Like <laughs> right. that's because that is a popular editor. A lot of people are using it, and I'm not the only one who is going to try to use that uh, extension. And as soon as somebody realizes, oh, it doesn't do this one thing, very likely somebody is going to go ahead and do it. And more likely than not, they're just going to use ChatGPT or Claude to do it as well. So if something is missing, oh, this is not happening. How do I do it? Give it to Claude and say, hey. 
Okay. Let's add this, and it would just add it, right? So, and what's cool is, like I said, it's it's VS Code is by far the world's most popular editor, right? It's crazy popular, and adapting a different model, uh, like let's say Claude or ChatGPT or whatever, and even well, that's a whole AI tool, and then within it, the Sonnet versus GPT four point oh. That is, is, you know, it's independent of the whole doesn't know auto hotkey, right? Like, yeah. that's why it doesn't matter. That's why these things are going to solve when you're using an editor or an IDE that is used in other languages that are really popular, right? That's why we're saying it's so much more likely that it's going to get um, updated because you have tens of thousands of people working using that tool and it's going to be fixed, but it'll still use our stuff, right? It's just a different, as we were saying earlier, is um auto hotkey you know that's just a different like dialect um compared to yeah, exactly yeah. it's not the the what are they called the auto hotkey extensions you know that that have to know the nuances of your language and highlighting right. and the controls but yeah it's um really 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 impressive if you haven't jumped on the bandwagon for ai we were really excited about it before but now that it knows auto hotkey v2 i'm crazy that like people aren't even more excited because it's it's yeah. <laughs> so far beyond game changing it's it's crazy right so get on it um definitely consider well i'll put up a link to the, our intro to vs code course I, i'm actually going to extend the sale we had i'll try to remember so if you go um hopefully you get an email from me with the discount um because it's like 50 percent off so we're extending that next week just to kind of celebrate all this stuff and yeah um it's it's i'm telling you don't let the world pass you by. Don't put your head in as an ostrich and put it in the sand. If this stuff mm -hmm. freaks you out, I understand that. At the same time, you're we're gonna, you know, people who don't start using AI and being the forefront of it, you're gonna be man, passed really quickly by the rest of the world. Yeah, just, that's right. Like the video if you learned something new. Um and, and also tell us your experiences. Tell us also if you found other um AI tools that are, you know, better than Claude is right now. I I'd be surprised, but I do think they're all going to slowly be bypassing each other here. And we finally right. reached this threshold um, where it knows V2 apparently pretty well enough. Let's put it that way um, to be, to be recommending it and using it a lot. But um, again, in, in another six months, it's going to just be really crazy. So yeah. Oh. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.